Consider the reaction shown on the screen. What we have here is 1-bromo-2-2-dimethylpentane. Now, when you look at this structure and seeing it mixed with methanol, what product will we get in this reaction? And also, what mechanism will the reaction proceed by? Would you say it's going to be the SN1 mechanism, or would you say the SN2 mechanism? And also, draw a mechanism that leads to the product. Now, if we look at the substrate, we have a primary alkyl halide. The carbon atom that bears the bromine is attached to one other carbon atom. Now, primary alkyl halides, they typically favor SN2 reactions. Now, we do have a protic solvent, which favors SN1 reactions. So what would you say? Is this an SN1 reaction or an SN2 reaction? Now, even though this carbon is primary, it's next to a very bulky tert butyl group. We have a quaternary carbon here. And as a result, this particular primary carbon is, for the most part, sterically hindered. But the SN2 reaction, it could work here. If we were to draw it, the methanol could attack the carbon from the back, kicking out the leaving group. In this case, we'll get this oxonium species. And then we'll use another methanol molecule to get rid of the hydrogen. So the end result is that for the SN2 mechanism, we'll get this product. However, we do have a lot of factors that favor an SN1 mechanism, which can work with this reaction as well. However, there's some issues with this. In order for the SN1 mechanism to work, the leaving group has to leave. By the way, because we have a weak nucleophile, that's going to give it time for the substrate to proceed via the S1 mechanism. If we had a strong nucleophile, this would highly favor an SN2 reaction. But there are factors that can push it towards the SN1 side. So when the leaving group leaves, we'll get this, which is a primary carbocation. Now this primary carbocation is adjacent to a quaternary carbon. So what we're going to get is a methyl shift. And this is going to lead to a more stable carbocation intermediate. So even though it's primary, and most primary alcohol halides favor an SN2 reaction, the fact that we can get a methyl shift does favor the SN1 reaction, in addition to the fact that we have a protic weak nucleophile, a protic solvent and a weak nucleophile. All of that, all of those things kind of increase the likelihood of us getting the SN1 reaction. Now, once we have this carbocation intermediate, methanol is going to react with it. And after a proton transfer step, the end result is that we're going to get an ether with the oxygen on a tertiary carbon as opposed to a primary carbon. Now, there's one problem with this particular mechanism, and that is the formation of a primary carbocation, which is not good. And that's one of the reasons why S1 reactions typically don't happen with primary alkyl halides, is because a primary alkyl halide is highly unstable relative to secondary and tertiary alkyl halides. So even though we can get this product by means of the S1 mechanism, for the most part, this particular mechanism that is presented to you right now is not the ideal mechanism. 
because this first step is very hard to do for an S1 reaction. For the most part, it doesn't happen. However, something else could happen. So rather than forming a primary carbocation, we can get to the tertiary carbocation with a methyl shift and while the leaving group is leaving all at the same time or through a concerted reaction. So rather than just kicking out the bromine atom, we can have a methyl shift do that. So this methyl group can move over here, attach to this carbon, forcing the leaving group to leave. So this bond has now been broken and here it is right here. So this methyl group, we took it and we move it to this carbon atom. Now this carbon lost the bond, so it's gonna have a positive charge. So notice we were able to form a tertiary carbocation by means of a methyl shift without forming a primary carbocation. And that's really the main reason why this reaction can work via the S1 mechanism. Because in most cases, when you have a primary alkyl halide, you typically don't get the S1 reaction because it's very hard to form a primary carbocation. However, tertiary alkyl halides work very well with an S1 reaction. It's much easier to form a tertiary carbocation. So even though it's primary, the S1 mechanism for this reaction it's going to be more likely than the SN2 mechanism. One, we could form a tertiary carbocation without the formation of a primary carbocation through a methyl shift. Two, we have a protic solvent which also favors the S1 mechanism. And three, we have a weak nucleophile. So all of those factors make this reaction more likely to proceed via the SN1 mechanism. And the fact that this primary alkyl halide is sterically hindered. So that kind of lowered the chances of getting an SN2 mechanism. Not to say that this won't work, we can still get the SN2 product. However, this is gonna be the minor product because we have more factors favoring the SN1 mechanism over the SN2 mechanism. All right, so that was a lot of talking. So let's go ahead and finish the mechanism. Now methanol, actually before we do that, let's redraw this in a better way. So these two structures are equivalent. So now we could use methanol as a nucleophile to react with the carbocation. And then in the last step, we're gonna have an acid-base reaction where methanol is going to act as a weak base removing the proton. And this will be the final answer. So this is the SN1 product. This is the SN2 product. The SN1 product is going to be the major product in this reaction. So this particular reaction, you could say, is an unusual SN1 reaction because in most cases, SN1 reactions are not concerted reactions, but here the first step was a concerted reaction where we were able to get a methyl shift at the same time the leaving group was leaving. So we, were, we avoided the formation of a primary carbocation by means of a methyl shift going straight to the tertiary carbocation. So be careful with this whenever you see a primary alkyl halide next to a quaternary carbon. Whenever you see that, you, you could get an S1 reaction, particularly if you're using a weak nucleophile or a protic solvent. So that's basically it for this video. For those of you who want more example problems on SN1, SN2, E1, E2 reactions, check the links in the description section below. I do have a practice test on this topic for those of you 
who may want more example problems. And there's a worksheet where you can download that practice test, which has about 77 questions. And I'm going to post that in the links below.